Even if we deny him, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. If you went to heaven tonight, you wouldn't find one individual that wouldn't say, through it all, God was faithful. Hallelujah. I am the Lord, and I change not. Isn't that what he said? I like the way it puts in the Old Testament, from everlasting to everlasting, Thou art God. Hallelujah. Isn't that comforting in a changing world? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Last Sunday night we preached about infirmities. And I want to extend that through the message tonight. So if you turn to Romans chapter 8, we'll look at the one verse again, not to exposit it, but just to talk about this subject of infirmities. Romans 8, 26. Could you stand for the reading of God's Word? Don't you love God's people? I'm sure your neighbor was convinced. but <laughs> Don't you love God's people? Amen. Amen. Verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. The Spirit helpeth our infirmities. I dealt with the rest of the verse last Sunday night, but I, I want to go back to, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Last Sunday night I preached on the Spirit helps. Tonight I want to preach on the Spirit helps, but we should... Okay? The Spirit helps, but there's something we should do about our infirmities. Heavenly Father, help us tonight as a people. Lord, we stand here unashamed to confess our need of You. Lord, there are a lot of struggles, a lot of pain, a lot of hurts, a lot of difficulties. And Lord, we just have a plethora of infirmities tonight. And God, we say we're unashamed. We say unashamedly that we need your help. God, help us by the preaching of the word to hear from heaven. And may people leave here strengthened and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Empower us with your spirit tonight. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. You can be seated. A preacher does like some feedback from his sermon and preferably positive. Always like it when folks tell on themselves. They'll shake my hand and say, Pastor, you just preached that because you found out I did such and such and I like to look at him and say, I never knew that. You know, you just told on yourself. I'd never known that. But the Holy Spirit is able to make it applicable to wherever folks are at, isn't he? But after last Sunday night's message on infirmities, several people came to me, and they either made a declaration or they asked a question. Those making a declaration said, my infirmity is, and they named something. And I appreciated that candid honesty. And some of them even asked a question. Some of them came to me and said, you know, I've got this thing. And they said, is, they name it, is this my infirmity? And I always stopped them when they started naming names. My infirmity is, and they name a person. I, I stopped it right there. And so I want to talk about infirmities again. And I, I want to just, just, just quickly review some things. An infirmity... Is not a sickness. I didn't say that correctly. An infirmity is not a sin. An infirmity is a weakness. It's a frailty. It's a feebleness. It's a hang up in our emotions. It's something wrong with the way that we think. It's something missing in our spiritual walk in life with God. In fact, I, I, I really like the way one. A man has consistently translated it from the Greek, the word infirmities. 
uh, I often thought the name in Greek sound, Asenea sound like a pretty girl's name, but you wouldn't want to name your girl infirmity. But, but one guy in, in, in translated this, and I think it's so correct, cripplings. Infirmities are cripplings, cripplings in the mind or in the emotions and in our life. And very rarely, very rarely in the Bible is it used as you would expect a physical problems. It's used of these other problems we have as people in our emotions, in our thinkings, and in our spirit. And I told you last Sunday night, it's correct, these infirmities or these cripplings, some of them we are born with. How many knows there's only been one normal, completely normal person? Who was that? Jesus. Everybody else since Adam except Jesus has abnormalities somehow and some way. And, and many of our infirmities we're born with. Some of us have infirmities because of the things we have experienced in life. I'm telling you, you can go through some things that can seriously scar you. Right? Just happenings of life. And they're infirmities. They become infirmities that we live with. And sadly, some infirmities were purposely done to us. I want to tell you, make no mistake, it's not lack of education or funding. There are some evil people that do evil things. And many people have infirmities because of something purposely done to them. And so when we talk about infirmities, we talk about scars and hurts and abuses and painful experiences and anxieties and fears and, and worry and oversensitivity and depression and rejection and, and weaknesses to temptation. And we have these infirmities. I tried to stress last Sunday night that infirmity is somewhere right here between a sin and a sickness. It's right here, this infirmity. And the reason I stress that is because God, by the blood of Jesus, He cleanses from sin and He heals from sickness. But what does Scripture say He does with infirmities? He helps with infirmities. That means that many of those, though He helps us with them, will have them when we get to heaven. But we don't have, though we have a crippling, we don't have to be crippled by it. And though we have a weakness, does not mean we can't have His strength. And though we got difficulties, does not mean He cannot sanctify us and empower us because He helps with our infirmity. You know, I sometimes just wish we'd get honest. And I, I, I don't think you have to get up, or, and, or even to me personally, I don't think you have to get up and confess your, confess your infirmity. But I think we could get help if somebody just said, Yes, amen, I've got an infirmity, and I need the help of the Spirit. I've got to have God's help. I can't handle this on my own. I'm not getting anywhere on my own. I need the help of the Spirit. And then I brought out, Last Sunday night that when it says the Spirit helps our infirmity, that word literally means He takes up the other side. He takes up the other side. Ryan, if you'd help me here just real quick. I mean, here I am. I'm struggling to carry this and I can't. But the Spirit sees that I'm trying to. So what does He do? The Spirit helps my infirmity. He picks up the other side. Thank you. I'll need you in the end. But here's the question I want to address tonight. If the Spirit picks up the other side, what is the side we are to be picking up? You notice it doesn't imply that the Spirit carries the whole thing. It implies that there's a side that we pick up. And that's what I want to deal with tonight. And and, and let me talk talk about picking up your side of the infirmity. First of all, I think you need to face your infirmity. Face it. How do you face it? First of all, you answer the question, what is it? What is my infirmity? And again, please don't name people. Your infirmity is why you can't handle that person. It's not that person. But are you willing to face your weakness? Are you willing to face your problem? And again, I I can't tell you what it is. Maybe it's bitterness. Maybe it's fear. Maybe you've been a victim. Maybe it's strong discouragement or you wrestle with dark thoughts and depressive thoughts. But you need to face it. 
You need to confess it to yourself. Now, I'm not preaching new doctrine here. I'm preaching the scripture. Sometimes we just need to confess our heart and say, Lord, this is the state of my heart. This is my need. We need to confess it to self. But it's not good enough to confess it to self. We need to confess it to God. Read the Psalms. They, they confess their infirmities unashamedly. You know, isn't it wonderful that we can come to God and just tell Him the way it is with our heart? Are you hearing it tonight? Sometimes in prayer we just need to say, God, I've got this weakness and I've got to have help. That's facing your infirmity. And sometimes, now you listen, I don't have time to qualify all of this tonight. But when it's appropriate, sometimes you need to confess it to somebody else. You know, some problems we never get help with because we keep them so secretive and they're never, they're never confessed to somebody else. But sometimes we need a trusted brother, a trusted sister, whatever's the appropriate respective situation. And we need to say to them, I've got this struggle, I've got this weakness, I've got this problem. Will you, will you pray with me? There's something about the power of that thing that can broke, be broken. Did not James tell us to confess our faults one to another? And I know, again, I don't have time to qualify that. You better be careful who you, you, you uh, uh, confess your faults to or they may end up on Facebook. That's not what this is about. But, I mean, isn't it wonderful that not only can you confess them to God, but sometimes you can go to a trusted brother and say, Listen, I, I, I'm not happy about this. And, and I, I, you know, I don't want you to think bad about me. But I've got this struggle. I've got this infirmity. I've got this thing I'm wrestling with. Hey, Amen. That's, that's built into to what God wants us to do. I mean, we've talked a lot tonight about praying one for another. But sometimes it's not just enough to say to someone, will you pray about this and leave it unnamed. But if you can specify and face your infirmity. Another way you face your infirmity isn't just naming it, but taking responsibility for it. Now you've got to understand, I'm not saying that necessarily you are responsible for what's happened to you. There are many people that have suffered things and they are not responsible for what happened to them. That other person is. The person that did it is responsible. But here's the thing. You can admit that somebody did you wrong. You can admit that it was not your fault. But you are still responsible with what you do with what has been done to you. How many agrees tonight? You must face your responsibility. You were done wrong, but you are responsible for what you do with what was done to you. You are responsible for your resentment. You are responsible for your bitterness that you harbor. You are responsible. And facing your infirmity is taking responsibility and say, I do resent. I do feel bitter. I am angry. And that's taking responsibility for your infirmity. You know, sometimes I've talked to people about their waning relationship with the Lord or, or, or they're not doing right in their, in their spiritual life and their life. Now listen carefully. You've got you to hear me out. And immediately I begin to hear things like, but you don't understand, Pastor. I was abused. And I, I, I'm not minimizing that at all. We're not talking about what the other person did. But they'll say, I was abused. I heard this just recently. I talked to someone about not serving the Lord. Well, I know I need to get saved, but, but my mother died. And I'm not minimizing somebody's mother dying. And I talked to someone else about doing right. And you say, well, they said, well, you know, you don't understand. I went through a church split. And you talk to them, and, and that's what you hear over and over again. I, I, it's, this was done to me. I had this death in my family. I went through this terrible experience in church. Amen. Listen, that may be, have, be what was done to you, but the thing is, you need to face it and take responsibility. You have a choice about how you respond to that. And it's not enough just to keep pointing the finger of blame and say that person, they may have done that to you. Amen. You may have a legitimate injury in her and I do not minimize that but you can face your infirmity and say I've got a problem because I've let the bitterness come I've got a problem because I use that as a reason for not letting God help me face your infirmity others may be blamed and, and rightfully so but you can take responsibility amen you see to blame others for your infirmity 
is to not move forward in God. Because you can never move forward in God as long as you're blaming somebody. See, to blame for your infirmity is not the same thing as seeking help for your infirmity. So first of all, you need to face your infirmity. And secondly, amen, you need to focus on the healing of and help with your infirmities. You know, I, I use this expression just today at lunch, and I believe it's true. I was saying something, and somebody at the table said, well, that's no excuse. And I said, you're exactly right. That's exactly right. But I wasn't excusing, I was explaining. You see, there are things that have happened to people that explain a whole lot. And we, we're sympathetic and we're empathetic. Amen. Our infirmities explain a lot of things about us. Our infirmities explain our struggles. But our infirmities must never be used as an excuse for not moving forward in God. Take your infirmity as an explanation for what's going on in your life. And it, it's true. Things happen. But never use that infirmity as an excuse of being whom God wants to make you to be. I'm going to say it one more time. Not to be redundant, but to be emphatic. Infirmities are explanations. They are not excuses. Hallelujah. You see, God wants us to be healed and helped with our infirmities. How many knows we can use these things for excuses to work clear away from God? Amen. I'm talking about getting help. I, I, I read early this morning on, on another subject I was, I was studying on about how a husband, he was ill-treated by his father. His father rejected him and, and treated him very harshly and now he, he was trying to, to live for God in fact I think he was even in the ministry but he was 35 years old and it got to bother him the way his dad had rejected him and treated him and so this 35 year old husband began to be very harsh and cruel and what he said to his wife and very harsh and cruel and what he said to his children and, and, and when his wife said something he said well I can't help it he said I, I, I'm hurting so bad the way my dad treated treated me and this went on and on and on and finally his wife and she was with him one day and he went into it again he said the reason I'm this way the reason I say mean things and I'm harsh to my family is because of the way my dad rejected me and his wife suddenly she had tried to take up for him but suddenly she stood up and I'll just read you what she said she said all right then fine but just tell us how long you plan to stay like this so we can prepare for it and stomped out of the room she had, she had even taken that as a reason for his harshness but what she wanted to know is when are you going to do something about it are you content of just staying like this are you content of always being like this what she was saying is we've heard the explanation but don't use that for an excuse of being healed don't use that as an excuse of being helped yes your infirmities explain a lot but we must realize there is one who can and touch the most intimate parts of us. He's acquainted with us. He knows how to help us. He knows the struggle. Amen. Thank God there's one that can touch and help. Focus on healing. We're all inspired by the stories of those that have real physical handicaps and that refuse to let the handicap stop them from doing and accomplishing things. I used as an illustration not long back a, a blind man that decided he wanted to climb as either Mount McKinley or Mount Everest. He decided he wanted to climb that mountain and he trained for it and finally accomplished it. A blind man. I mean, he had a tremendous physical handicap and he did not let that stop him and were inspired by stories like that. But I'm telling you, if you went to the kingdom of heaven tonight, even you would find all around you people that had great infirmities and great struggles 
struggles and awful things that were done to them. But there's something about them. They said this is an explanation of why I feel the way I feel and struggle with what I struggle with. But I refuse to let this keep me from advancing in God and serving God and living for God. It will not be an excuse because he will heal, he will help, he will strengthen, he will empower, and I refuse. I'm inspired by stories like that. Hallelujah. Don't let your infirmity stop you. I want to ask the question tonight, do you just focus on your infirmity and the problem, or do you really want help with it? You know, one of the things I do as pastor, and, 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 and I'm, I always feel, I always feel needed when folks feel like they can come to me and share. And, and, and so I listen. I really do. I, I don't open my mouth till I've listened thoroughly. And I've had people come to me and share with me their problem. And I'll sit there and listen. And I'll listen. And many times I'll listen and listen and listen. And finally, I've heard it from one end to the other. And I, I'm not minimizing. I'm just telling the story. I've heard it from one end to the other. And I think, well, at least now it's time for me to try to give them some biblical principles and, and some guidance. And I'll begin to talk and say, you know, I, I've heard what you have to say about your problem. But, you know, in the Scripture, there's this principle. And I'll begin to talk. And all of a sudden, instead of responding to what I'm saying about how to get help, they go back to the infirmity. And they start going over it again and again and many times I have just grown silent because I've concluded that they really don't want help they just want to talk about their infirmity now don't get me wrong there's value in talk and I want you to share there's value I've already covered that there's help of venting it and expressing it that's important you understand I'm not minimizing that but there comes a point yes this is the problem now let's see how the book can help us let's see how the spirit can help us let's see how God can help us amen you know some people are physically sick and I'm convinced they don't want to be healed and when they say pray for this they're boasting in their sickness rather than really asking for prayer you say that sounds pretty cruel pastor that doesn't sound too compassionate well I'm convinced of that because they enjoy talking about their illness so much and again we need to know we need to be informed that's not my point but you listen to some people they revel in how many pills they take how many doctor's appointments they take and it goes on and on I mean if you ask them how are you doing you better get prepared you better bring your sit down chair amen it's going to take a while amen because you know why they don't want to be healed you know why they don't want to be healed because they wouldn't have anything to talk about and anything to live for because they, they have centered their life they have revolved their life around their sickness amen don't do that with your infirmity hallelujah see I want to be healed I don't live for this infirmity it's holding me back it's holding me down I'm going to focus not what it's done to me I'm going to focus on how God can help me and then what's picking up our end is to forgive those who have caused or exacerbated the infirmity. That's just a big word to pick at you and make it worse. You know, people are like, just like animals. They find one that's got a weakness and they'll pick at it. I'm not going to get too graphic. I'll do that on Sunday morning to, so I can prolong the sermon without you getting too hungry. But how many seen chickens do that? Yeah. People are like that. But I'm telling you, picking up our end of the infirmity is to forgive those who have caused or exacerbated the infirmity. You know, a lot of people won't forgive the one that's done them wrong because if they forgave that person, they would have nobody to blame for not getting better. Right? But I'm telling you, the way of healing is forgiveness. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad He forgave us? Isn't that what we're instructed to do? Forgive one another even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. Could I tell you that forgiveness isn't hocus-pocus? Forgiveness isn't a hoop God makes us jump through. Forgiveness is the way God can bring healing into our lives. And again, I'm not minimizing. Some people have been done wrong, so wrong, that it has marred other folks with infirmities. But forgiveness... 
Sometimes we have to forgive not only the person, but we have to forgive ourselves for what we've done because of the infirmity. How many knows forgiveness just lifts a huge burden off? See, when I'm if, if Brother Rose has done me wrong and I'm not forgiving, that weight of that burden is not on Brother Rose. The weight of not forgiving him is on me. Isn't that right? And that I may I I mean he might have done something so wrong. I struggle with it all the time. But when I forgive, there is a path to healing and help. Oh, hallelujah. Aren't you glad for that? Last of all, picking up our end. How many like to hear those words, last of all? I want to give you opportunity to be first in the altar. Last of all, find out what the real underlying problem is. You know, I marveled several years back. I, I think it was in the Reader's I just I, I read of this woman that had this terrible, terrible pain in her foot. She went to the doctor, her, her family doctor. She went to the emergency room one night. The pain was so great, they x-rayed her foot, did an MRI, couldn't find anything. She went to a special foot doctor. He looked at it, he examined it, can't find anything wrong. Terrible pain. She lived with this pain in her foot for months. She had a dentist appointment scheduled, went to the dentist, and he found this abscess by x-ray on the top of her jaw. Her jaw never hurt. They call it projected pain. It gets on that nerve or something. Her jaw never hurt. The problem was not in her foot. The problem was the abscess in her jaw. And that dentist cleaned, drank, drained that abscess, put her on antibiotics. And when that abscess in her jaw healed, her foot quit hurting. How many knows a lot of times there is the real underlying problem? That's what God wants to address. Hallelujah. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be too personal, and I'm not going, for sh sure not going to name people. But my infirmity in ministry, I'm not sin, not a sin. My infirmity in ministry is rooted, if I look at it, if I try to see where it comes from, it's rooted in an extreme inferiority I've had since childhood because when I was a kid, somebody questioned my sincerity in worship. And that's been 40 years ago plus. And to this day, a lot of the things that I struggle with trying to ministry, I can trace that back to that time when as a child, somebody questioned my sincerity in worship. You say, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but I know what it's about. And see, I found out what the cause of that thing is. But you know what? God wants to help me with the cause of that thing. Amen? How many knows God knows how to get to the root of the problem? And most of our problems are in the jaw. Brother Brian, don't do that. It just went by and I grabbed it, so there it is. Praise the Lord. How many is glad the Spirit helpeth with our infirmities? He picks up the other end. Music, would you come? Ryan, what would you do if you saw me struggling to carry this pew by myself? Nothing. Ask me if you can help me. What? Help me? I'm doing fine. What are you talking about? You go sit down again. Here he comes again. Here, can I help you? Come on. What are you, what are you doing there, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing fine. Hey, that's great. I've seen that happen in a service. Somebody's struggling with great things. I've seen God or somebody try to help them. But as soon as the help started coming, I'm fine. I'm okay. Everything's good. 
I know I'm wearing you out. What should it be? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. But I, one more thing, brother. Boy, this is workout. Hallelujah. What if I say yes? I want help. Huh? See, I'm talking about being willing to pick up our hand. Are you willing to face it? Are you willing to focus on healing? Are you ready to forgive? Are you ready to find a root cause? He helps our infirmities. Let's stand across the building. Let's thank our, the great God that we serve. Would you praise Him? Would you worship Him? Hallelujah. Lord, we thank You tonight. Thank You, Lord, that You truly help our infirmities. I believe there can be victory in the house tonight. You can let the Holy Spirit help you and strengthen you and empower you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Lord, I'm going to be honest with you tonight. I'm going to share my heart honestly with you. Hallelujah. I, I may explain some things with my infirmity, but I refuse to allow that to be an excuse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're praying all over the building. I wonder how many would like just to begin to come and say, I'm going to pick up my side of the infirmity and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to help me and strengthen me and give me victory and sanctify me if need be. But I'm going to ask for the help of the Lord. I'm going to be honest. Would you come and fill the altar? Amen. Just face that thing. Amen. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's a grouchy spirit. I don't know. Amen. But just come and be honest about it and say spirit of the Lord I'm asking you for your help I'm asking you for your help hallelujah maybe it's fear of men maybe it's a lack of trust in God I don't know what your infirmity is but just be honest with the Lord God I'm coming clean with you God and asking you for help do you need to forgive somebody forgive them tonight you'll never have help with that infirmity until you ask them to forgive you by the grace and the help of God hallelujah Oh, let's seek Him around the altar tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Aren't you glad we can come to God honestly? Aren't you glad we can come to God honestly? Come on, young people, just be honest with God. This is my infirmity. He already knows. He just wants to hear. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus. Bless your name. I am so weak. Bless your name, Lord. Standing there in the I midst need your help, the storm. Lord. I need Shelter your strength, me Lord. And keep me warm. Oh, he calls my soul. Focus on healing. He gives me peace. Focus He's on healing. Focus on help. I need your help, Lord. I need your healing, Lord. Maybe you too oh, can sympathize. Hallelujah. You have been there and you felt Hallelujah. the pain. Thank you, Jesus. But it oh, don't take long you. to realize. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I'm that asking at the for mention help. of his name. Spirit of God, I'm asking All the help. doubt will have to Hallelujah. leave. And Hallelujah. he'll replace the hurt. Come on, you can call out to him. You can lay it all out before him. Hallelujah. You can make He's your heart bare before him. There. Hallelujah. Though I can't see. Yes, Lord. Waiting there with power. Oh, in those God, times I am so weak. Standing there in the midst of the storm. To shelter me and keep me warm. Let the Spirit help you tonight. He gives me peace. Let the Spirit of the He's eternal God help you tonight. For me. Let Him touch your heart. Let Him strengthen you. Let him encourage you. Let him help you tonight. He's always there.
there. He's always there. Hallelujah. Though I can't oh, see. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Waiting there with power. Hallelujah. In those times I am so weak. Hallelujah. Standing there in the midst of the storm. Oh, hallelujah. To shelter me and keep me warm. He calms my soul. He gives me peace. He's always there for me. Oh, blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you too can sympathize. Because you have been there and you felt the pain. Oh, it don't take long to realize that at the mention of his name, all the doubt will have to leave And he'll replace the hurt With sweet victory He's always there Though I can't see Waiting there with power In those times I am so weak Standing there in the midst of the storm shelter me and keep me warm. He calms my soul. He gives me peace. He's always there for me. There have been times I felt alone. I thought I was here all by myself. Only to find that I always someone else who's watching me nearby and when I heard his voice he was standing right by my side he's always there though I can't see waiting there with power in those times I am so weak shelter me and keep me warm. He calls my soul. He gives me peace. He's always there for me. He's always there, though I can't see. Waiting there with power in those times I am so shelter me and keep me warm. He calms my soul. He gives me peace. He's always there for me. Maybe you too can sympathize. Cause you have been there when you felt the pain. He's always there for me. There have been times I felt alone. I thought I was here all by myself. Only to find out I was so, so wrong. There was always someone watching me nearby and when I heard his voice he 
been standing right by my side He's always there Though I can't see Waiting there with power In those times I am so weak Standing there in the midst of the storm To shelter me and keep me he gives me peace He's always there for me Maybe you too can sympathize Cause you've been there and you felt the pain But it don't take long to realize That at the of his name all the doubt will have to leave and he'll replace the hurt with sweet victory he's always there though I can't see waiting there with power in those times I am so weak shelter me and keep me warm. He calms my soul. He gives me peace. He's always there for me. He's always there, though I can't see. Waiting there with power in those times I am so Shelter me and keep me warm. He calms my soul. He gives me peace. He's always there for me. Maybe you too can sympathize. Cause you have been there and you felt the pain. All the doubt will have to leave And he'll replace the hurt with sweet victory He's always there Though I can't see Waiting there with power In those times I am so weak Standing there in the midst of the storm shelter me and keep me warm. He calms my soul. He gives me peace. He's always there for me. In those times I am so weak 